Okay, so we're going to touch on oxymels today. And that's something most of the time when I saw oxymel, people think I slurred or had a stroke or something. They don't even, what in the heck is that? Oxymels are made from apple cider vinegar and honey. That's it. And then you would take a plant of some sort, mint, rosemary, something that is medicinal from your yard, and you would combine that. Um, oxymels have been around for 8,000 years ago. I mean, there were so many eras that this was the medicine. There wasn't your local Rite Aid. So what there was was an oxymel because honey's been around forever. And apple cider vinegar, well, that's a fruit. They figured out how to um, have that ferment and make that from all kinds of stuff, just like rice, you know, when they started making regular vinegar. So anyway, we're going to make an oxymel. And I really want people to understand these because, again, I could talk about the things I've healed on the farm with oxymels and the amount of this stuff that I pump out of the farm for people to purchase because of its medicinal benefit. I think we all know old Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine is not a joke, okay? You can sweep it under the rug all you want. It's the real deal. It is the real deal. And this is part of that culture. So I started experiencing these years ago when I, like everybody, heard the name, only instead of asking the question, I actually looked it up myself. And when I looked it up, I was astounded at what I had read. So I immediately ran through my farm, because what do we do? Grow tons of herbs here. Herbs, vegetables, produce. I ran through and found some of the most important ones and started. So we're gonna start making one, but then I'm gonna tell you re really how they can help. So what I wanted to first start with is for the people that go, I don't have the money to go buy herbs. I don't have the money for the plant. Well, guess what, folks? This is a weed in my yard and it's in yours too. This gorgeous thing is called narrow leaf plantain. And plantain is a powerhouse and I promise you it's in your yard. If not at your yard, it's at your work. It's in the parking lot at Walmart. It's on the side of the freeway and let me tell you, it's everywhere. So my yard loves this stuff, it's all over. What I love about plantain is like I say, uh, we could say it's antimicrobial, antiviral, uh, antibacterial, antifungal. It's so anti, and on top of it, it is so incredible. Um, you can chew this up, these leaves, on an open wound that you've just got bit, hurt, cut, spit it right back out onto that wound, and it stops bleeding instant, instantly. It's, it's, it's pretty shocking. Um, now, back to many of its benefits. There's so many guys, that's a whole nother video for me just to list everything it does. So you're gonna have to do a little legwork yourself and get on the internet. Um, in a lot of areas, you'll see what's called wide leaf plantain. We don't get that out here in California. You have to buy the seeds and plant that. But what we get is narrow leaf or rib leaf or buckhorn, uh, English plantain. There's like 50,000 names for it. It all looks the same. And this is a few plants you can see because it's left to just go crazy in the yard. If you just had one, it would look probably a little different. This is really clustered. Now I've rinsed this guy off and I'm leaving the roots because the roots are super important. I did remove some of the garbagey roots, the littler, dirtier ones, got rid of those. Um, I can guarantee you there's still some rocks and dirt in this. We don't care. It's all good for us. God made dirt. It don't hurt. So, um, in fact, uh, there's some earwigs on my little board. Um, you can see these little babies here. They're like little pincher bugs going. Uh, we just came out of that, and <laughs> we're happy going in the oxymel. So, we also, what I decided to throw in this, I normally do a narrow leaf all by itself, but this time I thought... Forget it, man. Let's get some of the mint. The mint is just climbing all over the yard. I have chocolate and regular mint, but I thought, you know, mint in wintertime is such a wonderful addition to any medicines, tonics, teas, whatever you've got. Um, so what we're going to do, this is pretty simple. I also, because we just did a video on Ceylon cinnamon, we're going to put some in, folks, because guess what? We can do whatever we want. <laughs> if I want to just go out there and grab some tumbleweeds, guess what? It is beneficial, so don't forget that. Now, this is how you make an oxymel. First things first, get a jar. Now, I got a big jar. You don't have to have a giant jar. You can do little tiny jars too. So the first thing we do is, because my plantain's rather large, I'm gonna break this guy up. Okay, get a few more of the rocks out of there. Maybe give it a quick little 
rinsey here because you know we only want like 10 ear wigs we do have limits <laughs> i can't have 20. so that's it that's all we're gonna do now you see that gorgeous little thing here's what we're gonna do we're gonna cram it in this jar oh we're done okay that's pretty awesome and not too difficult same thing the mint you know look it over because you know you don't want dead stuff on it we just want good green but anything living is health beneficial so shove that in let's see let's get some more i like these bigger leaves they're really pretty shove it all in there just shove it in mash it down real hard in there too i mean you don't want to press it like shove your foot in the jar but get it in there um okay so i'm gonna say let's go three quarters the way up of any jar because you know i, I feel that somebody's so full it gets pretty gross it could spill out okay i like that let's do this now too okay well, let's put some cinnamon in here for for fun because i just want you guys to understand you've got stuff in your kitchen you've got stuff in your yard the dollar store has it sprouts has it I don't care. Stater Brothers, Albertsons, where are you? There's a store somewhere um, that you're going to be able to find affordable things, if not online. But like I say, get outside. I guarantee you, you or your neighbor or someone down the street's got it, and they're not going to care if you pull their weeds. <laughs> so I'm going to touch on honey for a moment. We have three beehives at our farm. Um, I had to buy honey. Everybody, you can see this bucket here. Um, please do not use Roundup if you can avoid it. My neighbor does um, have equine and he raises his own hay and he's a wonderful man. Um, his spraying of Roundup has killed our hives. Um, it's really unfortunate and we have talked about it and, and I understand his dilemma too. There's fiddle neck weed in his yard and it will kill equines. And he's an older gentleman and cannot walk all this acreage picking out fiddle neck weeds. So I understand the use of it. But if you in any way can avoid it, please folks, it's a serious deal. Uh, my three hives are gone. Praying to God one reestablishes. Um, otherwise, we got to start over. That being said, here's the honey. I'm almost done with this bucket. Um, I love a good five-gallon bucket of honey because we use it for everything here. I mean, this is gold. I could just reach my hand in and spoon it out into my mouth, but I'm not going to. So, uh, apple cider vinegar. I don't care what brand you use. I just happen to only find this stupid brand. I do prefer organic. Um... I don't use Bragg's anymore. You guys can all use Bragg's, but they were bought out by a huge Monsanto corporation. Unfortunately, the quality has taken a dump -roni and it sucks. So if you've got Bragg's, use it, enjoy it, whatever. But personally, I'm moving away from it. I've just noticed the quality, the, everything has changed about it. So we've got Lucy's. Okay, so here's what I do. If I just poured, now you're gonna do equal amounts of these two. That's how it works. It doesn't matter how much, you just use equal amounts. You don't have a measuring cup, eyeball it. Nobody cares, okay? It's going to still make medicine. Um, so I use a bowl, and the reason I use the bowl is because if I just start pouring the honey and the vinegar in here, it's really hard. It's not going to mix up. So how I found to do it, and we'll just start off with a small amount, and you can kind of see. So I'm going to do like a big old cup load of honey there. And this is wildflower honey. I, you can use any honey. Make sure you don't have fake honey. They're cutting all the honey with corn syrup nowadays. And let me tell you, I don't think you're going to have a uh, medicinal benefit with that. You might end up in cardiac arrest or with diabetes. So please, God, make sure you've got a good quality raw honey um, because it does, it does matter when it comes to medicines. Okay, so we got one cup of that. Let's do one cup of this. Okay, there's that get my little wire whip here and whip this up that way you can kind of see when I pour it over not the beginning it is it'll be kind of weird like it doesn't want to mix it's gonna mix folks trust me I'll show you some of them I've had fermenting now for like I don't know four or six months uh, the great thing about an oxymel once you make it people go oh does it go bad no it does not go bad let that sit in your house for a lifetime. Who cares? It is delicious. You can just use it as a little tea elixir and some warm water. Or you can just douse it down. I just chug this stuff when I don't feel well. I mean, it's amazing. It kills everything. You know, you want to make a really strong one? Get oregano and garlic. Jesus, you're going to kill anything alive in your system. 
you know? And if you say, oh, it's not working, well, you know what, you probably had like three drops. And let me tell you, when it cures stuff naturally, you gotta get crazy with it and get all in it and not be afraid. Trust me, there's no report of anyone dying over an oxymel. And if so, I wanna see the scientific study on it for sure. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty well mixed. You can kinda of see it's watery enough. Boom, beautiful. We didn't heat anything, we're not messing with anything, okay? Pour it over. Okay, now we keep going. See, we've only filled how much? Just a little, let's do another keep cup. Keep the cups coming here. Let me get a little scraper so I don't put honey in my, oh, perfect, I have two of these. All right, let's do another one. And you can see once we get it filled up, I'll turn around and show you the three jars behind me. So it's, you know, when these plants come into season, get out there and start making it. And if it's something too costly, slowly start trying to purchase some honey. Get yourself a little stockpile. Now, here's another thing. People go, I can't afford that honey. That is too expensive. Guess what? You don't have to do that much honey. You can also make oxymels with a lot less honey. Um, the honey was added because of its benefit and flavor, but we all know tinctures don't use honey. They're just apple cider vinegar, folks. So again, you're telling me, oh man, I can't get in that game. I can't afford it. Okay, everybody can afford a gallon jug of apple cider vinegar, and I know it, and the, if those weeds are free in your yard. Let's not make excuses. Let's try to not get sick and spread more disgusting germs around this world think we've all had enough of colds recently well actually I, I don't really get sick but but I know everyone around me is lethally sick I mean there's so many colds this year my farm stand all it all it sells is medicinals I mean it's just absolutely crazy when I was just making these for my family and realized that people are just seeing so much benefit in their lives that the stuff just is gone instantly Okay, so we're going to do this last one and pour it in. Now, I'm not going to finish off this jar on camera, guys, because I want to talk to, uh, to you about these other jars over here and how I've used it. And it take five more minutes to finish this, but I'm going to show you here. Okay, so there's that one. We've got our second. Now, this is a total of two cups apple cider vinegar and two cups of honey that are so far in this half-gallon jar of Ceylon cinnamon, narrow leaf rib wart plantain and gorgeous mint so we would probably do one more of those batches guys get it up to the top and then what we do if you come over here as you can see these are some of my older ones so these are i love usually doing gallon jars i just didn't want to do it for the video um, so sage white sage we grow tons of white sage a super favorite you give them a shake okay so once they're sitting this is I don't know, four or six months, doesn't matter. I decided not to strain this one yet. I'm gonna strain it real soon though, because everybody's sick. Sage is shocking, guys. White sage, garden sage, black sage, pineapple sage, purple sage, I don't care. The baby's over there asleep. <laughs> so get yourself some medicinals going. That's sage. This one here, my favorite, oregano. Anyone buy oregano oil? Love the stuff? Well, guess what? It's, it's expensive. I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm saying grow some oregano. It's a weed. All this is oregano oxymel, okay? The last one over here, this one we sell out of so fast. It's stupid. Um, this one, all it is, people love lavender flowers with rosemary. Um, I could make gallons of this all year long, and I would, it's crazy. It's so delicious, folks. Again, the medicinal properties on each one is unique and different, but what I do choose for all mine, they must have antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal and viral. They must have those basics. I wanna be able to kill something heavy. Now, once they're like this, all you're gonna do is take some cheesecloth and a big bowl, dump it into that bowl and get all that stuff out of there. Start packaging it in bottles. I commonly use amber colored or something, some glass so that it's dark. We don't want to expose to sunlight and stuff. You got to think of a medicine. Um, and it's a lifetime of deliciousness. Like I say, you can take a, sm a spoonful, two spoonfuls, three, four, drink the bottle. It's not going to hurt you. You're going to like it and you're going to feel good. Now, 
how do we use these? Well, I did a story on the Ceylon cinnamon telling you about my hogs and how I've healed them. Now, I have all kinds of livestock. We have beef, sheep, goats, all of it, but they don't usually need healing. It's always the pigs and the chickens and turkeys that'll come down with stuff. So, again, oxymouse, I use this infamously to treat the birds and to treat the pigs. They love the taste of oxymels. It allows me to start getting cinnamon, oregano, sage, these compounds that can kill bacteria in them. I, my price should state our hogs are all organic, so this is why I do this. We don't use any drugs or medicines. Um, it's amazing. They can be respiratory colds. Now, again, if you find them on the ground and the pig's already dying, I don't think you're gonna save them with the oxymel, folks. So let's keep this in perspective. But when you catch it early, because we monitor the health of all of our animals, yes, it's, a, it's gonna help them just like you. It is truly amazing. Um, little toddlers and children, don't, not babies, they can't have honey. Once they get older, yes, they can take this too. It's great for everybody and everything. And again, folks, don't limit yourself. Play around in the kitchen. Start healing your family. You're going to be amazed. And this is one particular herb I want you to definitely all start researching because it's everywhere in the United States. And it's something you can just go pick out of your yard and have health right in your kitchen. All right, guys. Go make an oxymel.